Hey everybody, welcome to Geekaholics Anonymous episode 196. I'm your host, Rico, here with my co-host. Hey everybody, this is Dane Cody. Dane Cody and I get together once a week, talk about video games, TV, movies, and or whatever the hell we like. Primarily video games, most often video games, pretty much video games. With a little video sp- games, with, with a little sprinkling of all all all, all that other stuff. Um, stuff. Welcome everyone. If you've never been here before, we usually start the show with our BS section, which you are now wading knee deep in. We get into some what you've been playing, where we talk about the hottest video games in the industry. Our new section, uh, where we talk about all the insane stuff that happens in this uh, fun fun hobby that we love so much, and then of course our. Uh, public service announcements at free for all section um I got for some, everything else got some chat about some captain marvel going on there this we both saw it yeah uh, what uh shall i say housekeeping yeah we got some housekeeping join our discord server in any Heck web yeah. browser type in bit.ly slash gap discord G-A-P-D-I-S-C-O-R-D. And that will get you into our Discord server where a bunch of us like to poke fun at each other, post gifts and silly commentary. It's a good time. We uh, hang out. You know. What else? Anything else? Stuff. Uh, I think that's it for the simple housekeeping. Of course, make sure to share us everywhere possible uh, to uh, get us to more ear holes. And I do not really have any stories from the weekend, do I? No. I was sick last week. That was last week's story, right? Yep. And then the, now my kid's sick, so that's fun. I haven't gotten to play so a lot of... So this week's story? Yeah, I didn't get to play <laughs> a lot of video games. Ugh, that sucks, dude. I'm sorry. I did install a smart home security system in my home. Ooh. Um, which is kind of fun. So I got, like, really cool, like, big uh, touchscreen panels with, like, video cameras and, you know, wireless locks and sensors and doorbells and all that nonsense Uh it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Keeping your shit secure. Yeah, yeah. I was, like we through my work. Uh, I don't know why I did the quotation marks thing. Like, like there's no quotation <laughs> in my work. I was, gonna, I was gonna say, man, it's you do work there. Not not even. Like. We have a smart home uh, <laughs> security See, product. You could have done the quotes for the smart home. <laughs> okay, <but. laughs> so uh, we get a deal. Um, so of course I'm like sure I'll check it out. We, right, we get a pretty sweet, awesome deal. No obligation. If we don't like it, we can cancel and keep all the stuff. So I'm like that's what they tell you. It's, all, <laughs> it's just it's what they're trying to tell you to just get you in the door, you know. May, but I may as well get to try it. So yeah, it's, cool. It's really cool. <laughs> it's like opening the door. The little the panel like talks. Kitchen door is open. Front door is open. Well, that won't get annoying at all. No, I've already turned out the volume. <laughs> You can turn them off and customize and adjust. Okay. The panels cool. are really cool, though, because they're, like, tablet size. They're, like, seven or eight inches. How how many panels do you have? Uh, Just one? Two. Okay. I put one in the kitchen um, because it, like, ties into the front door camera and right. uh, the outdoor camera. So it's, like, you can, see, uh, you can see outside or someone buzzes you, basically, it pops up on there, as well as your phone. But you don't have to use your phone. So, like, if you're in the kitchen doing stuff, you can just go over the panel and, you know, see mm. the person and talk to him and let, you know, open the front right. door even or tell him to F off, which is kind of cool. Set the package beside the door and back away slowly. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's pretty neat. Sweet. It's like, that's pretty do you, cool. Do you really need it? No, but I guess it's peace of mind when you um, go traveling. Yeah. It's got a lot of really, like, crazy, like, um, integrations like it's a z-wave controller as well oh and interesting a, a okay wife. it it's like based on android the whole platform so it's quite dynamic so like huh. you can tie your lights into it you can tie your door locks into it it's all kinds of crazy sensors and then you can automate stuff it's got like bluetooth it's just easier for the hackers to show up yeah and well, open it's up got, everything apparently it's got 120 not 120 maybe it's a higher encryption but I was gonna it, say I hope it's at least two fifty six. Yeah, but. I think that's what it is two fifty six. And anyway, it <laughs> uh, it's kind of neat because you can like geofence your yard. So like, if you leave the house and you forget to arm it, it'll arm. Oh, that's cool. Or when you come home and you know you pull in the driveway 
and it's like it senses your phone. It's like boom, right. unlock the door, disarm the hmm. alarm. It's pretty cool. So all I need to do is steal your phone, is what you're saying? I haven't set that up, but technically, <laughs> I guess yes. If you really wanted to get into my home, I think you could find ways around the system. Yeah, well, it's like anything though. Yeah. It. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. Nonsense. You don't need, but yeah, yeah. Hey, I, like I it. get to try it for free, so why the hell not? Yeah. I've just been driving my wife crazy with like, because I've been doing stuff like suit, like fishing lines through the attic and through the garage, right. and like doing everything like pro, right? So. Hmm. Hmm. Pretty. So she's just like Rick, get in here and help me. He's Stop like, fooling around with your alarm system. Working after work. Just getting <laughs> sick and tired of this. That's funny. Uh, Dane. Yo. What have you been playing? Oh, baby. I've been playing the Devil May Cry 5. <sighs> nice. Yeah, it's, it's going to be all new, fresh games this week. Nothing old. No, actually, I didn't play anything old. Because, let's see, Devil May Cry 5 came out uh, technically Thursday night last week at 9 p.m. I like how um, they do that. It's... So, I... Got my code and pre-installed it for Friday when I got home from work. And this was um, your free copy because you bought a AMD video card. Hell yeah! Nice. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, man. A little bit of a side note here. So I bought I bought the Radeon Vega 64, and so far, all t- so so I got three games with it for free, or I should say included. Um, and so far, they have all been like 9.0 games. Resident Evil 2, Devil May Cry 5, and I've got The Division 2 coming. Like, that's an awesome lineup of games. Like, I, I kind of feel like I lucked out there. Like, the, that's, that I'm pretty, pretty, pretty stoked about awesome that. pretty awesome package. Yeah. Did I? Um, I finished finish Resident Evil 2. I think that happened. Like, I half finished it last time. Uh, you finished it last week. You said you finished the Claire playthrough. Oh, I did? Okay. Yeah. Oh, man. So. Yeah. The week before that, you had finished the Leon playthrough. Yeah. I started, started playing started I started playing more Red Dead. That's what it was. But that's probably going to take a backseat again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the DMC5 um, is on the PC. Yes. So I'm on the PC. I'm playing it there. It's a great PC port. It runs great. It's on the uh, Resident Evil engine, so same uh, engine that they used for Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 2 Remake. Uh, looks beautiful. Runs awesome. Definitely can't complain about that. You're playing uh, with mouse and keyboard, right? I'm not. I am playing with <laughs> I am playing with a controller. Uh, that, that's the type of game it is. That, that type of game I know, definitely I like, works well. I like well. making fun. Of course. Um... That game is something special, man. People oh, it's so good. Great reviews. They're well deserved. Uh, this is, I mean, to be fair, they're not they're not making many of these types of games anymore. Um, but man, like this is right up there with like Bayonetta two. It is fantastic. Um, there's three characters that you play as, so you can play as Nero, a character called V, and Dante. Um, I'm about halfway through the game right now, so I've the the first half you play predominantly as Nero and V, and it's funny. Just last night, just as I stopped playing, I got that's the first mission. I think it was mission nine or ten that you play as Dante. Mm. So I haven't I haven't actually had a chance to play as him yet, um, but I have played a whole bunch of missions with Nero and V. They do a couple like. It's a character action game. They know exactly what it is that you want. They have gotten rid of some of the terrible platforming in the previous Devil May Cry games. The move sets are all there. Um, you start off as a like Nero. Um, he's had his arm removed at some point. I think that was in like Devil May Cry Four or something. Or it, it doesn't really matter. Because um, let's be Devil honest, the, the story here is like fucking ridiculous. Like oh, just yeah. straight up, it's so ridiculous. If you if you've never played any of their games, who cares? Get in here, play this game. It's worth it. It's great. It's awesome. Um, 
action just flows. It's air like, so combos, well. juggles. Oh, like, totally. Counters it's, like it's oh. a huge like all up in the air, bunch of enemies on screen. You're diving back and forth from one enemy up into the air over to the next enemy. Um, the combo system has almost got a little bit of a like a fighting game into it where you can actually do like you know back forward combo like back forward a and things like that to like do a combo or forward and like hit up or hold down the r trigger and do things like they all you know um but nero's got this he's got like these mechanical like arms that he uses um so like you can equip a whole bunch of those like depending on uh at the beginning of the level you can do like a loadout and you can select like which arms essentially you want to bring into battle with you and the thing is is they're like one use type situations so like once you use them they break um and if he gets hit while you're trying to use it it will also break it uh, you do find them like strewn around the map, not not a ton but they are around do they like enable so, different combos or different fighting style they they do different things like so like one of them um almost has like a time slowdown mechanic one of them has one of them is actually literally the mega man mega buster so it like blasts like (laughs) uh one of them is actually like literally it's got a rocket attached to it so you can actually like jump on it and ride it and it'll blow hit enemies and explode um you know so like each one of them is kind of different one of them penetrates like armor uh really well um so if it and like breaks, I said, they're, is he relegated to like a weapon in his other hand still, or so? So that's the thing. That's that's what we call his like devil trigger. That's his that's his devil trigger move. So you've still got your sword and your and your gun. So you can use the gun and the sword. Those are your. That's essentially your. Uh, I was going to say triangle and and square. Your Y. I mean, I'm using yeah, like an Xbox One controller, so so like your yeah, your Y or your X on a, an Xbox One controller. Um, so your Y would be your your sword, and your X is your gun. Um, and so essentially, you know, you hold X, it'll like charge up. He almost like drops like extra like bullets into the magazine, and it almost acts a little bit like a shotgun, where he does like a big shotgun type blast with it, where he you know he expels a bunch of ammo. Um, you know, obviously the sword he's just like you, all you over can't the place. Change characters on the fly. They're like you get this guy. You for cannot. This mission. So yeah, that's that's the thing. You start off with like one character. You finish that mission, and then at the next mission, most missions are preset. Like like you get this character or that character. Um, there was one mission so far that I've done where you get we where you did get to choose, uh, and that had to do because like the story they were both kind of going to the same place but they were going to take different paths mm. and so you could choose which essentially which oh, path so you wanted to take plays into the replayability of it yeah um so yeah so like nero is like very he also when you hold down the like the Z targeting style and you use his devil trigger it almost acts like a like a whip that you can like grab enemies and either pull them towards you or if they're big enemies you get pulled towards them so you can kind of use that whole set of moves. So you know you're you're cruis- you're running around the map or running around the battlefield. You're attacking guys. You're pulling them towards you. You're jumping in the air. You're doing multi combos. You're shooting them. You're like slashing them. It's you know, and of course the whole point is to try and get your combos up high by doing different moves mixed with. Um, different types of moves and killing enemies and quickly and all that, you you know, you get your rank from D to C to A or to B to A to S and then to double S and then to triple S. Um, so you, you know, like as the, like the fights go on or whatever, like the better you're doing and uh, if you get hit, you are. Yep. Totally. And if you get hit, then it resets back to zero. Oh, blah, um, blah. If you're high enough up, like if you're high enough up, it won't go right to zero. You'll drop back down to like D or C. So if you're at like S and you get hit, it might drop you back down to C. But if you're at like A, it'll drop you down to D. Pretty much anything below that, it just wipes it out. And you got to start over. Uh, and at the end of each kind of like battle, yeah, if you will, like little you get like a, as you move along yeah, the stage, right? Pretty much, and really at the end of it, you get like a little stylish rate that says, like, you know, that encounter you were an A or an S or a B or a C or whatever, right? Um, and then at the end of the level, once you're all done, you'll get like a rating that you how well you do did for you, that. Um, map. 
like how do you know you're halfway mission. through just, I know there's 20 missions in the oh, game, okay. and I'm at, like, mission 9 or whatever, so I know I'm close to halfway. Um, I, so really, I've, I really want it. I've heard so many good things about it, but... That well, that's the crazy... Th- so, so, it's it's real good. It plays so well. Um, the other character is V, and he's he's a new character, and he plays so differently. He's got two familiars... So he play you play as him, but he has a panther and a like bird. It's like a griffin, and they're actually like like it's like they're it's like a demon bird and a demon panther, and those are what you use to do damage. So the only thing he can do to directly attack enemies is actually he has to land the killing blow. So you have to do all the damage with your familiars, and then once you've got them down to a certain point, he does their the like health or whatever, like they they kind of radiate like a specific color, and you can hit the one button and he'll like almost like teleport over and he'll do his like finisher on them, and that's the only way you can kill enemies. Like his familiars can't kill any enemies, but it's like it's this whole thing where you're trying to like stay out of out of the way of attacks and things like that, but get your familiars to attack and do, to do this. And then he plays very different, (laughs) very different. Uh, And he also has, instead of a devil breaker, he's got a nightmare familiar that like shows up and it comes up and it's like this great big, huge golem thing and like lays waste on the battlefield. It's pretty badass. Um, And like, of course the better you're doing, the more like meter you, you, uh, you build he's got a whole thing where like if you're in the middle of battle and you're running out of meter or you you need more meter you can actually like hold a button down and he'll start reading poetry out of his book that he's got and it actually like builds his meter but of course he like walks around very slowly so you got to kind of be like it's a risk reward right like if you need the meter you might get hit but like it's a you know so it's this whole risk reward thing be more damaging totally devastating combos Yep, but he's also slower. Like he, his movements are slower because he's, you know, he's his familiars are the things that are attacking for him. Um, but like it's it's just such a cool so do, and like feel. Do they because the bird damage? acts like your gun? Yeah, they totally do. Okay, so it's- so that's the crazy thing is like your your familiars like they have like a health bar essentially on the screen, and when it gets to zero, they essentially get knocked out, and you can't attack until they get revived so how you can help them revive faster is if you move closer to them and they will revive quicker but Mm -hmm. like sometimes like there's been a few like there was one boss battle in particular where they like i didn't kind of realize what was what was happening that they were getting um knocked out hit as much as they were and all of a sudden like they were both knocked out and here i was like running around (laughs) the map trying not to get my ass kicked um while you know like while they were like recovering and stuff right um there's a whole skill tree for each character um you collect orbs and things throughout the game um the so the skills like for example the as you play you're going to collect like blue orbs and like each i think each level or every each every other level or something like hidden in each of the levels there's like these like blue orbs and when you collect four of them that makes your health bar go up an extra bit so that's like how you can get more health um and then there's these like pink orbs and like those are the ones that help your like your um like your devil meter go up um so when you go between characters whatever health and devil trigger stuff that you've done so if you've spent a bunch of money or found a bunch of those orbs and made your health bar really big or your devil trigger bar really big those go between characters so those actually so those changes you know which are great so if you're playing as v or you're playing as nero or you're playing as dante those changes stay which is cool but the orbs that you're spending those are that is character specific so like at the very beginning of the game you're playing as nero and you get like 20,000 or 50,000 of these like orbs and you go in at the because at the beginning of the level you can before you even go into the level you can customize like your character and there's like different moves and like yeah totally there's like a whole bunch of moves that they can unlock um 
some of them are like movement stuff. Like it'll help you but only like, specific for the character. But that's the thing. Like each one of those is specific to the character. So if you go waste like all of your money on Nero, and then you have to play as V, if if you know more so at the beginning, if you don't realize this, then you know you're gonna have to play at least half a map or whatever, half a mission as V without he just that's it. He's you know you're stereotypical he's vanilla if you will yeah um there is a mechanic where in some levels halfway through or three quarters of the way through or whatever you'll come across a like a phone booth and if you pick up the phone it'll the nina the girl that's like yeah driving the cool van shaggy wagon. she'll show up yeah the devil may cry shaggy wagon she cruises up and you can uh do customizations and stuff that way mid-mission so if you got a bunch and like, you know, and usually that that stuff is like before a boss or, you know, like they they're pretty good about that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um But yeah, man, it's like I said, I've played as the two Nero and V so far. I haven't got to play as Dante. I've heard Dante like plays awesome. Yeah. Um but the way that the other two play is so good that I like fuck it's it's great I, you just you go in there and like the wanted, the way you're just throwing just dudes to around hear that this game was okay uh, no oh no it is oh i haven't been hooked on a character action game like this in a long time like i'll probably beat it this weekend it's it's so good yeah well um, it's like when i started like i oh. started resident evil and then i like got off of it but then when i got back into it it was the only thing i wanted to play Totally. So I could see the same thing. So yeah, so there are 20 missions in the game. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm roughly halfway. I think I'm at mission 9 or 10. Or I think I'm, I can't remember if I just finished mission 9 or if I'm starting it. Anyways. Um, so far, like I said, the story is ridiculous. It's a total anime Japanese. Like, the characters look ridiculous. V is this, like, super kind of emo... I'm a demon and they, I have my familiars and they help me and he he's very kind of quiet and like like I said, he reads out of a book of poetry for crying out loud. Um, Nero is kind of your more classic, like, I'm a goth badass dude. I've got a sword with a freaking... Um, <laughs> it's got like a handle like a motorcycle and you can like rev it. Yeah, I've seen that. So that's, so that's the other <laughs> thing is like, I that. forgot actually is like, you can, you can use one of the trigger buttons and actually like rev his sword up <laughs> and it'll do more damage, um, for certain attacks and stuff, which is kind of helpful. So, so yeah, it's, there's so much here. The combo system is crazy. Um, there is an easy combo system if you're finding like that you're getting stuck or, or that it's you know too difficult yeah, or whatever, and you can kind of mash on the button. I guess that lowers your ranking possibility if you use that. I'm not. I'm not sure. I haven't used it. I just know it's there. Uh, like at the beginning, it asks you like, "Hey, yeah. you know, have you played these oh, kind of games?" These and combat systems are super in depth. Like, there's a. Lot I can't believe them. how deep it is. Like, it's it's wild. And then moving it's between crazy zero, they did three characters too, eh? Oh yeah, I think it's just and, like and a big like, like I don't know a big love letter thank you to the fans of Devil May Cry because the the I guess the fan base has been kind of split the last couple games like between DMC and well yeah the last DMC game some people really liked but a lot of the tr- like kind of original like, quote unquote uh, true fans were kind of like it it was a good game but it wasn't a good Devil May Cry game like so yeah um, the one the one thing. That I will say, and I'm not, and I think I understand why they did it this way. Um, but every once in a while, it's still like kind of is annoying. Is there's not like a sp- there's not a dodge button, so there's not just like an easy like quick dash or something like that. So which is there a kinda, counter or just a guard? There, there is a counter. Um, so some of the so it depends on the character. Like, some of the characters have, like, a counter when you unlock it, like, as a move, that if you do a certain thing at the at the right time. Um, but, like, the other thing is, is, like, you have to hold... If you hold down the Z, like, essentially Z targeting, if you hold down, and in my case, it's uh, the right bumper. If you hold down right bumper, you can do kind of like a, like a... You'll roll out of the way, like, side to side, so it's kind of like a dodge... But I just mean, I, I mean it more of like, 
recently playing these types of games, you know, especially with like Darksiders uh, and stuff, Darksiders 3, it's very specifically like it has a dash button, right? Like it has a dodge button. You hit that button and and you like kind of do a dash or whatever, right? Um, And it's funny because this type of game, you feel like that's kind of what should almost be there. Like it, it feels like it could use that. But at the same time, like I understand, I think now that I've played it a bit more and I've I've played some more with the characters and stuff, like I think I understand why it's it's not kind of like that. That you know that that doesn't change with Dante. I'm not sure. I don't. I doubt it. Just because of like the way that like the controls seem to work and stuff. Um, just because like I know with Nero, you've got essentially like your like your lasso type idea, right? So you can kind of like whip between enemies and stuff so easily that i think the idea was like don't give you a dash or a dodge necessarily because like they want you to kind of be throwing guys up in the air dashing over to somebody else attacking them dashing back like chaining combos and counters yeah dodging and exactly you know stick and run stick and run totally it's exactly um there's been a few times where like it just it it did feel a little bit like you know you've got a big enemy attacking you or whatever and I'm like man like a, a proper dash like like yes I need to there get is kind of like a side roll <laughs> exactly um, that that like quick side roll is is helpful and it, it kind of does the trick but it's not quite like you know what I'm looking for either you would like. exactly yeah um, but that aside man like I am so like so happy with this game That's awesome. it, it just. I was, it, like I said, it runs super well. It looks everything's maxed out for me. It runs great. I think my like frame rate's like well over 150 I, uh, to you know plus to frames. To be honest, I was I was worried it packs an E3. Like I wasn't very excited for it. I don't think it demoed really well. Also, none of the demos I did were guided, and sometimes I sometimes I kind of like a little refresher on what you're doing and what you should be doing. So I will say, like, I played this at PAX. Um, PAX, the very beginning of the first level, they more or less, like, cut off the... Um, they more or less cut off, like, the the story stuff at the beginning. But, like, that first level that we played at PAX was more or less the first level here. But I will say it plays so much better than it did at PAX. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I knew I felt the same way. Like when I finished the demo at PAX, I was like, "Oh, I don't, I don't know. I'm a little worried about that. It feels kind of, I don't know. There's just something not quite off. there." Yeah, and I'm, like now I'm, that I've played the the full game, completely gone. I'm glad it's you like it. Like, and I'm glad like mint. I'm glad I've heard it's, lots of positive oh. talk about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to to play as Dante and to play like to play more of it. It's it's just it's fun. I'll, I will it just, pick it, it up. Is, when it's on sale, I'll probably get it. Just because right now mm-hmm. I have so much stuff to play, I, I can't really justify buying it to just sit in my pile. <laughs> it it feels like there's certain. It feels like a Devil May Cry game, like Devil May Cry three or Devil May Cry four, but with like all the little touches that you would kind of want them to do to make it more streamlined and to just play a little bit better. Mm. But it still feels very much like those games. That's good. And it's not a bad thing. Like like I said, they got rid of... There was some bad platforming sections in those previous games. They got rid of pretty much all of those. You know, it is kind of a linear game. Like, it, it knows exactly what it is. And it's just... it's Here you go. You run through the level. There's little branching paths here and there. But ultimately, there's a little bit of light puzzle solving. But, like, it's pretty much... You cruise through here. You do your thing. You attack hordes of enemies. You fight... You do cool combos. And you look crazy doing it. And then you fight a big boss at the end. Yeah. And, and then there's a cutscene or, or a, a couple crazy cut scenes. action cutscene. Absolutely. And the cutscenes in this, holy shit, they look so I good. I heard they look good. Holy cow. Like someone was saying the character so models for good. whatever reason are just really, really pretty. They look they look inc- like they look fucking great. Um like Resident Evil two looks good. These look better. Uh like remake, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, no, I, I like I'm very, very pleased with this game. Cool. Um, this would be a game that I would buy regardless of if I got it for free, especially now that I've uh, yeah, played now, it. Like, now that fuck, you've played it and confirmed great. what I've read everywhere. It's yeah. It's on my 
to 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 buy list. So, well, I played something new too, Dean. Really? What did you play? I got Rick? the Division 2 for, uh, of provided did. by hashtag uh, ad. <laughs> Not really, but um, it was provided by Ubisoft, thankfully. Thank- You're just a corporate shill. Yeah, man. It's the best game ever, 10 out of 10. You should go buy like three copies of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I guess if you bought the super crazy, super uber deluxe version, you could have started playing yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, I got my code. Like, what uh, was that? Like Wednesday, right? Oh, uh, it's Wednesday now. Is it Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday. Is it Tuesday like or Monday or Tuesday or something? or something? People could start playing yesterday. Some select streamers and outlets started getting code on Monday. Um, mm-hmm. I got on Tuesday. Um, we were not that cool. No. Um, we weren't even cool enough to get two codes this year. They said Jeez, they might have so. more, but that won't be till next week and you'll get your free copy by then. I so. Know. I know. Um, if that's the case, if uh, we do get another code, I already uh, talked to Ubisoft about potentially that being a giveaway. And that's the case. Ooh. We'll probably hold on to that for our episode 200. Two. We'll see. Um, anyway, yeah. So I've been playing Division 2 on the PC, thankfully provided by Ubisoft. Uh, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Uh, I was not paid to play it. I was not sponsored to play it. <laughs> just caught her. You didn't make a million dollars? No, 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 no. Oh, unfortunately. Fuck. It was just a review copy provided for, uh, you know, review, review and, uh, and purposes. talking about purposes. It's more division. It's in DC. Yep. It just reminds me of like, oh yeah, the division one was, it was a really good game. Um, it's tact- it's kind yeah. of a tactical cover based shooter. It's real time, but it's also yep. very heavy in the RPG mechanics, gear, loot, uh Level it a, up. a good loot system, unlike some recent releases. One uh, might say it's a schluter. Uh, God damn it. It you <laughs> could say it is a schluter. And yeah. uh, there are so many systems they've added. I've just scratched the surface. Um have you gotten past essentially where the beta stuff was? Yeah, done, I'm past the yet? beta stuff, but okay. I've opened up a few zones, but there's just so much stuff on the map to just explore and just mess around with. There's like mm-hmm. kind of like public events per se um, yep. that seem to litter the environment more so than I found sometimes when, besides packs of roaming enemies in Division 1. Mm-hmm. This has much more like there'll be like public executions or yeah, other you gotta, like try and save yeah, or other types of events that are are more yep. one off than one or two enemies standing there. They're, they're a little more involved. Um, what are they like? There's also the um, there's, I can't remember what they call it. Where like which yeah, where you gotta like show up bases, which are kind of like uh, an attack and defend kind of thing. You, you, yeah, you attack and kill everybody, but then you have to defend the ex- point for a while while they try to take it exactly. back. Exactly. So those are, and if you can hold them off, then you guys like kind of reinforce it, and you get like benefits, yeah, it'll and have bonuses, the, and things the like the that. Civilians right? will take it over, and then they like unlock like a room that will usually have like some loot caches, a weapon case, or whatnot. I guess right. the rewards vary depending on area or level, but yeah, it's kind of cool. You you take them down, the enemies progressively get harder, and then the, the big baddie comes out, and it mm-hmm. gets a little hectic. Like it, I'll say, the difficulty in this is definitely higher than the first division. Like I've died a few times. Oh, I noticed that in the beta. Um, I, like I was like, man, which, like I don't. I feel like playing it alone, like because I I mean I played a t- a ton of the original mm. Division One by yeah, myself, it's easy. like just cruising around like you know like doing side stuff and if you have friends that show up that's cool you can go off and like do some missions together or whatever but i felt like in this like there was a few times where i stumbled across a stronghold and i was like like, i'll I'll, I'll do this and then like i got halfway through it and i was like oh shit man like i'm getting hectic this was a this was a dumb idea like why did i try to take this on by myself Um, it 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 feel i feel like the difficulty does uh to make you be more strategic. And I think that's mm-hmm. what the whole point of the division game is kind of, it's a more strategic, tactical real time shooter, not just yeah. spray, spray and spray and pray and just mow your enemies down while standing up. It's like, no, you use, you need to use the cover or you're yeah. going to die. You need, you to, need use to use your, your skills properly yeah. and you need to, you know, like all that stuff. Right. So there's a bunch so. of new skills. They changed the perk system. Um, man, mm-hmm. they've, they've, 
they've added all kind like they've got the whole settlement system with like little civilian run settlements that you can upgrade and unlock stuff you've got your main base of operations now which is the white house um, right like i said i've seriously you're obviously just trying to like, unlock stuff pardon and, yeah yeah like which you're doing you're missions to, like, unlock which and upgrade unlock and, yeah. new people that unlock new uh new things at your base of operations or as you unlock uh, do side missions you will grow the settlements and what they have available to you as well right they oh man it's i don't know where to start like the level like i think it looks fantastic i've heard some people say like it looks good but it's okay i i I think it's cool because it, it's very it's varied. You've got the tall buildings mm-hmm. like New York. New York is really cool. Don't get me wrong because it's pretty awesome to be in a real life city. That's like, man, I've been on this block. I've been on the street. I know that mm-hmm. this is around the corner because you know it's freaking New York. So I don't have that connection right. to DC, but it's more colorful. It's more a more varied environment in my opinion. It's so detailed. Like I've run past stuff, and you know, like I've been running around in a couple of rando groups. Um, cause mm-hmm. you can call for help at any time, which is kind of neat. So you can group, I was going to mention, a yeah, easier in, in the open world areas. I feel like as a, you don't That's just help me out with like the friends. stronghold that time I was like, Oh, I can ask for help. And luckily somebody wandered over and, and helped then me you out. Just, you do those random events and other stuff. And then, uh, you know, you can get into the main missions and side missions, of course, too, after you've grouped up. Uh, and this guy's yeah. like, oh, hey, man, there's a case over here. And it's like, I literally like ran by it because I didn't see it because there's just so much stuff in the environment. I think it looks really nice. It plays really well on my PC. Um, I'm, it looks really good. I oh, When yeah. I played the last beta, the the open beta before, like, what, two weeks ago before launch, mm-hmm. um, I couldn't believe, like, how, how, like, much better it ran and how much nicer it looked than the previous, like, beta that they'd had. So... I was already like, man, if, if, you know, the final game looks at least as good as this, like, that's, hey, hell yeah. I did, like, you know what I mean? Like, I did have a couple bugs. For some reason, the resolution was, like, it was lower than my native resolution, and it wasn't full screen. Oh, weird. But then the last time I launched it, that didn't happen. And then I was having audio issues, which didn't happen the first couple times I played, and then it started happening the few times after I played. Oh, okay. I was getting no sound. I could alt tab oh. to my desktop and I would get sound and then alt tab mm-hmm. back to the game and I would lose my sound. Oh, and that's then, awkward. Uh, a couple quick searches on the internet and it was it's something related to a, a Logitech headset process. So I just you just kill it and then boom. It it oh, fixes okay. it. So thankfully cuz I was really frustrated. I was trying to play and it's like I have no sound. <laughs> I'm like I can't play this game with no sound. This yeah, is a game yeah. you need to know where enemies are coming from. Like this is not They're yelling at you and they're chasing you and they're coming from off screen. It's yeah. not really a mindless shooter, so I was a little upset, but to be honest, it took me a whole five minutes to figure it out. Fair enough. I'm really happy. I'm dying to play more. It's an it's a pretty awesome game, and I've literally just scratched the surface. Like barely. I would have liked That's to have played cool. more. Like I mean, honestly, I wish I had had played twice the amount that I've had, but of course, I've- I mean, I'm I'm hearing that the, so far the launch. I mean, obviously, it officially launches on Friday yeah. for the world, but um, but I mean, it already sounds like it's been a, a great launch, and it sounds like like the servers have been oh, really run like no, surprisingly no, like, stable. Besides and, the audio like, issue and the weird resolution thing, the game itself and the engine and everything and connecting with other people, it's been no mm-hmm. issues, which is pretty awesome. Seeing as how like other schluters <laughs> that have come out recently have not. Uh, well, the, definitely that's had the thing. Some, like, some issues, they've right? taken so much from Division One, from their community, from the feedback. They've right. added so many things, and then they've also seen and taken like I feel like the kind of public eventy kind of things. I feel like that's a total yeah. influence from the Division, or not the Division, from Destiny. From Destiny, like, yeah. I totally feel like that's a Destiny thing. Um, and of course, you got all the crafting systems. God damn, there's so many different types of materials, and they, they've <laughs> and they've they've changed the way mods and stuff on the guns work, which I think is kind of I think that's kind of better. Uh, yeah, I like I like the the way it works better now because before you would essentially they get were a whole like a scope individual or loot whatever table of different varying yeah. quality and and RNG, right? Right, and and like you could have a great scope, but it would only it would be attached to this gun, and then. If you wanted to attach it to another gun, you had to remove it from the other. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you really whole... liked the scope, you had to have two of them. 
craft right. to them. Whereas like now it's it's more like something that you unlock and it's like a tier. Like okay, you've unlocked these scopes yeah. now and you can put those scopes on, all your on guns. guns. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of cool. I um, like that. There's a lot of like quality of life stuff that they've done for sure. Yeah. Um yeah, it's pretty fantastic. What, what level are you at now? Uh just hit level 5, I believe. So, okay. Like I said, I'm just scratch the surface. I think I played 3 maybe 4 hours. Okay. That's just yeah. su- such a cool lively world. Like just roaming around going in all the little nooks and crannies. Like I found this room that has a bunch of loot in it, but I can't figure yep. out how to get into it for the life of me. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no door to it, but it's like there's a gun case and a couple other loot boxes. And I'm like, how the fuck do I get in here? Like, I've been up and down the whole building. And I don't know if it's a huh. glitch or if maybe there's a skill or a perk that, that I can destroy that door or open it. I really don't know. It's weird. That sounds very similar to a, a room that I found in the beta. And there was a little, there was like a little panel beside the door that I was able to shoot and it opened the door. Ah. I don't know. Uh, Give it a try. I'll look for that. I tried looking for stuff yeah. to shoot. I didn't see anything. Um, oh, that's crazy. That's in yeah, that like, particular one. I did a very similar thing where I was like, "Wow, the fuck do I get in there?" And then like I shot that panel. There's definitely a and it opened the a door. level of detail in the environment. I feel like is upped a little bit in this one as well. Mm-hmm. Except for now, God damn it! Like I want to play more, and then as of course my kid's got a goddamn fever and hasn't been going to bed, and like I've lost like two days of game time the last couple of days so that's why i haven't got to play it as much as i would have liked to right um yeah yeah and that's that's about it i don't think i played any division or any uh, destiny or anything else since i got it yeah so i'm pretty sure it's fair enough eating up my free time for the next little while definitely sweet with that so we so we get into some schluter news <laughs> shut up <laughs> get into the news just, and just stuff. embrace it do, 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 just do, embrace the it. news no. Um, EA is going to skip a uh, E3 press conference this year. It's because they don't have any schluters to talk about. <laughs> Let's be honest. Their last couple <laughs> press conferences are pretty weak sauce. Their last one was terrible. And the one before that. Watching, was them, the, watching them play the like Command and Conquer mobile was thing. Was the one before that the, the one where the, they just oh. showed all like that super early footage of stuff? It's like, we don't really have anything, but here's some stuff from this and that. Yeah, that was the that was Star the one Wars where they and... we showed like that first little bit of the Star Wars game that they've since canned. Um, it's not surprising. So yeah. It's weird that they're still going to be doing their EA Play event, but I guess they'd just be doing streams of their new Need for Speed and sports games and stuff. So they still want to be. In... Oh, I'm sure the Anthem will be there. I'm sure Battlefield Five. Their so whole not having a press conference. Battle Royale if they will, will be have there. Any crazy announcements. I don't know. That's you know what I mean. Um, Because I mean, the thing is, is like they're saying, like we're gonna have live streaming essentially over like a few days, Mm -hmm. showing off a bunch of stuff. Um, Which I mean, I guess makes sense because then they can like live stream whatever. Because you also have to remember too, like respawns Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order will have been announced. Yeah, that's apparently by then. Rumor is is it's getting announced at Star Wars Star Wars Celebration in April. I feel like that got confirmed for some it reason. It got confirmed, so that's a for sure, sure thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. If like, not, they uh, enough pretty people much out said, there like, saying we're going to learn more. <laughs> yeah, so like, so that's going to be that seems that seems you know, to be their biggest announcement for the year. For sure, um, I mean they've they've kind of said that there's uh, they may know, have that on a need for they speed. may have that other respawn Titanfall universe thing. Yeah, maybe the devil and Apex sure Legends. Be, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, well, and I was going to say that there'll be streams of Apex and probably like whatever's coming up and and what's new and hot happening, you know, at the time or, or going to be upcoming and stuff, right? Because they're, they're going to be trying to roll that hype train hard. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, obviously, like Apex has exploded and become like, you know, one of the biggest games in the world overnight, practically. So... But yeah, it's a. Uh, I mean, I I don't think that it's a terrible idea for them not to put a yeah, press conference I, on. I, I don't think it's a bad but, idea, uh, and it's not entirely surprising considering the last couple have been pretty meh. Yeah, they've been. Poop. Um, so those Google controller pictures you've been seeing all over online, they yeah. ain't real. Someone created the, some. The patent is real. Yeah. The, the so there there is a patent, but then the the the, the like. 
the screenshots and the stuff of the render, yeah. those are Someone not real. Someone went and 3D rendered it. And right. Just like, but I mean, ultimately, like all they were more or less doing is showing a patent for a controller. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that controller will look anything like the controller no. in the patent. Because it's really all about button placement and sticks if any and of so it's on true, and so forth. I do kind of like the colors look kind of cool. But the form factor, not so much. So. Yeah, it looked weirdly awkward like yeah i feel like uh, however yeah. google decides to deliver their service it's going to be like you can use a ps4 controller or an xbox controller well that's the funny thing the, the the patent that the controller is in is for a system that notifies players when they get an invite or a game is ready to play through a controller so it's literally nothing they're not patenting a controller or anything really to do with a controller outside of it's it's literally just a notification system that has to do with a controller. So next week, when we don't mm-hmm. record... GDC. Because I'm on vacation, and GDC's happening, and there's going to be tons of megaton bombs. Of course. Google's already announced that they're going to be revealing... Like, they've already Something. talked about it, and they've already demoed it. There's been a closed beta for in the U.S. So I guess... Yeah, the, Project I Stream. guess the announcement of the platform or the real coming out party is going to be next week. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what they show and talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of Google still, they announced that Jade Raymond is their VP of gaming. Um, that is very so interesting. that just goes to show they're, they're obviously pretty serious with their gaming initiative. Google ain't, ain't playing around. Yeah. She's, she's been in the industry for a long time. She's been to Ubisoft. Yeah. Um, she uh, was she not one she of the at people at Motive before yeah. this. She's she's produced. She's been a producer, executive producer on uh, on, on quite a few big two, franchises. Watch Dogs, Splinter Cell, Blacklist. Um, she was trying to work uh, with Motive. I believe um, that was Battlefront, wasn't it? Battlefront Two or. Yeah, or was it the canceled Star Wars game? I don't know. She was at EA the last no, little while. That's that's a different person you're thinking about for the canceled Star Wars game. Um, but yeah, never, either way, this is pretty cool. Yeah, it just goes to show Google's pretty serious because she's she's a serious uh, lady in the gaming industry. She's a badass. Uh, hey, remember all those cool dance moves that I showed you at that party? Are you talking about those Fortnite dances? Oh, yeah, that's it, the Fortnite dances. Oh, okay. Um, Fortnite lawsuits have been dismissed. So After I, the new yeah. Supreme Court ruling? I think we... Saying that uh, <laughs> copyrights have to be filed and finished being filed before you can sue somebody over copyright? We talked about Carlton's dance getting thrown out, right? Or denied? That was yeah, a few weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, got denied. So since that, uh, I guess these... Uh, court cases were like oh, you know what you guys don't have anything to stand on so until you have a copyright um we're gonna throw this crap out because you're wasting everyone's time so yeah well, yeah because before you could file a copyright infringement lawsuit as soon as you had applied mm-hmm. for a registration of the copyright with the copyright office now they have to have waited for the copyright office to act on that application so i'm assuming pass that application before being able to file suit as of right now all of these people were filing copyright claims against epic for dances in Fortnite, and actually none of them actually had a copyright no. on any of their dances they have they uh, may and, have copyright. and at least one of them yeah. had actually been actively denied copyright of said dance because they fraud out said you can't do that. Yeah. So right now um, the process for copywriting dance moves is extremely murky according to this article's wording. Uh, according yep. to US law, you can't actually copyright a dance move, only fully choreographed routines. The difficulty is that there's really nothing to say what the dividing line is between the two. So right. obviously until that gets really figured out, you know, his shit got thrown out now, but that may not mean well it could be the death well, nail or like it could out. be it, like it, one of these other moves they figure is i don't know <laughs> well i mean it'll stay thrown out unless they get a copyright on it right and that's the thing so now it's they're in a different position than they were before 
So I feel like this is dead now. Yeah. I yeah I I we've talked about it before. I yeah it's a what a weird what a world weird world we live in. Pull all the dances out, <laughs> or maybe give them some cash or something. Yeah, or don't. Whatever, Epic. You make lots of money, so you do you. Yeah. Uh, Niantic reveals Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Uh, the next, this is yeah. the next AR game from the Pokemon Go studio. Um, Niantic didn't have a chance. I assume there's a trailer or a video here. I did not have a chance to watch this. Um, it's yeah. There's gonna be beasts, objects, um, people. Uh, I I haven't honestly had a chance to look fully into what this is gonna be, but it it looks like it's a similar idea to um. You know, there, there's going to be stuff that's going to be happening in AR, similar to Pokemon Go. Um, it's going to launch with uh, multiple challenges that allow groups and friends to take on different villains and Dementors and all that kind of stuff, which is, in a weird way, a little bit like a trainer battle, kind of. Um, it's It's like they've taken the Pokemon Go formula and they've more or less converted it over to Harry Potter. Yeah. No release so, date yet, but no. man, Niantic's going to be making a bunch of money. Yeah. It definitely has that potential. No, oh, with Harry Potter attached to it. Oh Absolutely. yeah. Oh yeah. Big time. In the Google play store. It's like so. pre register. Yeah, I'll so give yeah, it. I, I'm sure it'll be a free to play. I'll give it give it a go. Yeah, I'll I'll probably I'm install not a huge it. And give Harry it a shot Potter see fan. what happens. I think it was it's like Power Rangers. I just think I was a little too old for it. If I was a little younger, I would have probably loved it. I uh, I mean Harry Potter's rad. I I can't complain. Uh, I I kind of missed the initial like book boat, but like caught up on the movies and watched them all and. You know, Wizarding World at uh, Universal oh, Studios. Don't get me wrong, pretty like, fucking that's rad. awesome, and I like Harry yeah. Potter. I just, I just, I'm not as invested in it as some other franchises. Oh, for I, sure, I appreciate and enjoy it, but I don't. It's not, it's not like, uh, it's not like Transformers or any of the Marvel stuff for me, where it's like I get actively excited for it. Right? Fair enough. Uh, Halo: The Master Chief Collection is confirmed coming to PC. On the Windows Store and Steam, um, yeah, doing interesting. A little different, apparently. Um, they're adding Reach as well, and they're also mm-hmm. rolling the games out. Um, I think one by one, one by not one, all of them at yep. once. Um, yeah, very. So Xbox Game Pass subscribers will also get access to Halo Reach as part of obviously that. Which is kind of cool. Um, I'm kind of curious if if it will like like I own that on on Xbox One. I'm wondering mm-hmm. if it's going to be like back compat now. Oh, play like, do anywhere. I, do I get I'm to sure play it on play PC? Like, yeah, you like you know what I mean. Like, um, that being said, like this is pretty cool. It's going to have Halo, Halo Two, Halo Three, Halo Three ODST, which is personally my favorite Halo game. I've never uh, played ODST, and then Halo Four. What? I know. That's funny. See, for me, the one that I haven't played is actually Halo Reach. Yeah, yeah I've played Reach. Which is actually I, technically the first I really Halo liked game. Reach. Because Reach technically happens yeah. before Halo yeah. Combat Evolved, yeah. right? Is my understanding. Mm-hmm. The fall of Reach. Um, so I am actually curious to play that one. And uh, OD- will definitely ODST is locked. like the most different one. Like, it's, it's absolutely a very different campaign, it, different play style than the rest of the Halos. Y- yep. Um, that's the first little glimpse of Destiny. Mm-hmm, exactly. They was, teased Destiny in, in ODST. ODST. There's like a Destiny poster yep. or something. Yep. I am. Um, I'm looking. I will gladly play these games again on PC. Yeah, I don't know how how well some of them hold up. Um, I know. I don't know. I don't know how well like the original Halo. Like man, for me. I really like the Halo games, but man, every time they show up, like with the flood, 
that's that's for me where like it kind of always seems to go downhill from there like i loved the crap out of halo 3 and then like that those last few levels with the flood i was just like oh this is terrible yeah. why are we doing they're this? not a very exciting um, enemy but yeah um that said like like i said i look forward to playing some halo reach and uh I can. It gives me an opportunity to play the Halo games that I missed. Like I came in kind of it. I, I played the first Halo. Uh, I actually skipped Halo Two. Go figure. And then I've played Halo Three and Halo Three HODST and Four, but I also skipped Halo Reach. So, so for me, I look forward to playing Reach for the first time, um, and and maybe even playing Halo Two as well. So, which is cool. Mm-hmm. It's exciting. I mean, that's, right, this is yeah, the just, first time you know, that the Halo games have ever been like you know besides the redo that they did of halo combat evolved um that's the only game that to my knowledge that's been on on pc isn't it halo 2 is on pc wasn't it i i didn't think that halo 2 not a remastered one i think the original one i could be wrong i can't remember i played one of the halos on pc already i know that much because i got double achievo points for it yes so but that's pretty cool Mm mm-hmm the only disappointment. I'm wondering, just does this mean that Halo Five's going to be coming over too? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's not part of news. the Master Chief Collection, so that's fair. Well, neither was Reach either, but I don't think. But like it is now. It is now mothered between. Um, Brendan, player unknown, Green moves on from PUBG. So, um. Well, I guess it's a little kind of, of clickbaity title because at first I was like, yeah, "What? I was gonna He's say leaving?" I'm like, "Yeah, that makes sense. He's got millions of dollars. He's just found f- f- funded. Focused. He's essentially creating a, a, a like division within yeah, that company to focus on other. That stuff. He gets to do whatever the fuck yeah, he wants. So he, so that's he really- wants to make a different play. <laughs> he wants to make another game type. Right. He said he wants to do the something. The past different. five years of my life have been all about battle royale. So. Um, they've created a new division focused on research and game development, uh, which is the PUBG special projects. He's still uh, part of PUBG Corp. He's still consulting, right. creative director on PUBG, but the development uh, is going to be led by uh, another gentleman by the name of Taesok Jang. Is that how you say that? Taesok Jang. I don't know. Uh, anyway, sorry. I guess that's uh, he's in the Seoul, Korea office. So, yeah, I'm Mm -hmm. pretty sure it's a pretty healthy place, and he's it's his baby. So, hey, I would want to move on to do something different. I'd get sick and tired of working on the same map over and over. Well, they have three of them now, but yeah, I know what you mean. Hey, man, he like revolutionized a new game mode. Like we think we know like what kind of video games exist or what video games are capable of, and here we are in like twenty. What six seventeen when that came out? Maybe twenty eighteen, twenty seventeen, and twenty seventeen. It's like the biggest phenomenon now in gaming is this completely new mode that no one was really aware yeah. of. Though Battle some, Royale. though some got close to it, kind of like Mag yeah. and Battlefield, but not quite. And then this is this yeah, kind of to work. Um, man, Mag, there's a game I hadn't thought of. In a long <laughs> massive time. action game. So, uh, how, how big, how, um, as we reminisce for a moment, how big were the, like, cause that was a PS3 game. I can't remember how that, I think it was, and like what squads was, it? Like, was of it, was four, it? but it was like 64 on 64 or something like that. Yeah. Like it was like but, over a hundred people. But in map. Like, yeah. But I don't, you never saw like a hundred people in one area. No, it was kind of segmented, no. but like a back and forth yeah, push was, and pull flow. Kind of a wild thing. I barely remember thing. that game. I played it a little bit, but. It kind of stuck. Yeah, I didn't get super into it either. So It didn't play very well. Also, at that point, I was playing shooters on PC, and they were far superior to console shooters. Same. That was, that was quite a while ago. Yeah. Uh, Yakuza spinoff Judgment pulled from sale in Japan after drug scandal. Oh, no. This is such a weird story. Uh, a voice actor, uh, what's his name? Pierre Taki, who, uh, yep. whose voice and likeness are used in the game. Uh, he was arrested, was arrested for the suspected usage or possession of drugs. Huh. Uh, then never found cocaine on him, but his drug test came up positive. I just think it's weird that like 
I don't think he's... This may not sound like a reason to stop selling yeah, the game. Yeah, he's like... Not even, similar he's, occurrences are common in Japan. Not even like the main character. And, and it's not like it's a violence or an assault case or like a, you know, freaky, weird, bad thing. You don't want to be... Yeah, drugs are bad in Japan, obviously, but just seems kind of like an he, over... Apparently, the report is that the 51-year-old Taki actually confessed to using a small amount of cocaine... And police are currently searching for further evidence. If he's prosecuted, he could face up to seven years in wow. prison. Wow, doing drugs in Japan ain't no joke. No, do not do drugs pretty much anywhere in the Asian area, because that shit's bad. I think it's weird that they pulled a game. Like, I don't really feel like that's very controversial, but hey, it's their mm-hmm. country. That's their viewpoint. Yeah. I it, thought that was crazy. I don't like, think they'd ever that would ever happen. Isn't there, like... I guess the wor- what is the worst example of someone bad in a in a Western published video game? I can't think of a single game that's been pulled because of a voice actor or an actor is doing something stupid. Like Mike Tyson's Punch Out, they took his name off, right? But the game still exists. Hmm. And doesn't that have more to do with like? The licensing stuff. Oh, like, no, it was after the, the fact when just... he got charged for assault. Or he went to jail for right. assault. So you take off the Mike Tyson and now it's just punch yeah. out. Anyway, yeah. it's, I think it's a little bit of an overreaction, but hey, I, it's, that's their culture. So they, they do what they want to do. So yeah. apparently we we're in the wrong uh, content creating business, Dane. Clearly. Apparently, there's a report, rumor, that Ninja was paid a million dollars by EA to stream Apex Legends. Wouldn't surprise me. Good on him. Am I jealous? Hell effing yeah. Um, (laughs) As Dane and I talked before the show at first, I was kind of like, that's crazy. But then when you break it down to his audience... It's actually pretty. Che- that's a lot cheaper than what you'd pay Facebook to get thir- access to 13 million people looking at your Facebook posts. So <laughs> here's here's the thing, though: is it's not just the fact that he can get. So he's got a following of over 13 million followers on Twitch. So every time he streams, essentially 13 million people get an email saying, you know, he is streaming. Um, whether or not that means that 13 million people are going to actually show up and watch is a different story. It gets into the mind the thing is, space. Is that, like, that's, that is way... Like, yeah, that's the you, thing, right? You it's bought like, some it's, direct advertising. That's... Like, they exactly. don't care about Ninja. They're just buying his reach. Totally. And and the thing is, is, like, he's going to tweet about it. He's going to talk about it. He's going to play The funny thing is, is Apex Legends is so good that they, I, they didn't need to do that. But I guess you want to guarantee, yeah. hey, I guess it's a small price to pay. Marketing budgets are gigantic for games. This is the, the new era we live in. That's that's the thing, right? Is like if you get Ninja, you get a few of these other guys for that initial surge to, to get people interested. In, and, and like you said, the game is great. Show people how good it is. That's very, very helpful. I mean, there's a big reason why when a game or a movie or something like that comes out, we see you know, things about it on television and we see ads for it on web browsers and, and things like that, right? This is essentially the same thing. It's just that you're, it's much more targeted because the thing is, is like, not only are you showing 13 million people a game, but chances are it's a game that those 13 million people are actually interested in because he generally plays PUBG, he Halo and Fortnite. Those are, the, exactly the type of people that are probably going to go on to play Apex Legends. Yeah. So you're literally pinpointing 13 million people that are potentially people that are going to play mm-hmm. your game. Oh, it's That's definitely huge. not. It's definitely not a bad move. I'm so just. So I mean, really, when you think about it, like a, a million a, dollars a, for bar, that yeah. kind of reach is it's surprisingly affordable. It's just really, what I'm saying is, I need to dye my hair, get a headband. Five hundred yeah, become good at, at no, a game. I don't have to be good. I just cute. need a headband and dye my hair. Five hundred thousand each, buddy. <laughs> uh, moving along and actually be good, good on him. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Nintendo news, sort of. Octopath Traveler prequel uh, has been announced for mobile. 
Um, and they also mentioned that there's a new console game in production as well, considering how successful Octopath Traveler was. Right. And they also mentioned that it moved at 1.5 units shipped globally, which is pretty fantastic for a hardcore JRPG new IP. I- uh, speaking of Octopath moving into mobile, sort of a, a, a prequel, uh, I did want to take this opportunity to mention um, it's not on our outline here. No, I saw it on Twitter this, and this I just reminded to it. it. Battle Chasers Night War is also coming to mobile. It's going to be is coming to mobile. That's pretty cool. So if you didn't play it on Switch, you didn't play it on Xbox, or you didn't play it on PC, you're going to have the the possibility to play it on your mobile. That's pretty phone. cool for those guys. That's awesome. Um, no word on on uh, price and no word on on release yet, but it is coming out, which is pretty rad. That you can take Battle Chasers with you on the go. Mm. I have Octopath Traveler. I need to play that game. God damn it! The pile of shame grows. Yep. Uh, PlayStation News, uh, PS4 firmware 6.5 is here, and with it, it brings remote play to iOS, uh, which is cool. Pretty cool. It's also not cool because it doesn't support DualShock uh, 4 on Apple devices. It's also not cool because they didn't open it up to Android devices that aren't Sony, which is freaking stupid. For those yeah, of you that are not very, aware, that's a very Sony remote move. play has been like an exclusive feature for the Sony flagship uh, Android phones. You could remote play your PS4, and you can actually use a DualShock 4 with those. But mm-hmm. anyway, for whatever reason, it it's on iOS, but it's not on Android yet. Like, which is really dumb. Mm-hmm. It's a cool feature. They need to open it up more. That's for sure. Bring it to Android. Open it up. Sony could be dumb. Uh, I don't have much to say about this, except for there's like a crazy rumor going around on the internet that people are freaking out that apparently Sumer is going to, uh, so Sumer, Sony is going to acquire Take-Two. That I feel is, like that would cost a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, that's not happening. That's that's all I have to say about that. Mm. It'd be insane, but like, why would you do that? Like, when the, when their games already sell on your console more than the competitor... <laughs> doesn't make sense i guess Here's it's just thing, more though. money in your pocket. why like because you'd never go exclusive like you wouldn't buy take two and then stop putting the games on pc and xbox you would th- well i mean That's think about millions it. and millions I mean, of copies back, there was there was a time when when grand theft auto and those games were exclusive to sony platforms can't say that it would hurt hurt them but uh, they, would, um, they would never make their investment back as 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 i guess my real question is is besides rockstar and the grand theft like besides rockstar what does take two have that why would you like do you know what i mean like that's really the question that i i don't know who else is under take two i feel like i should know off the top of my head but it just ain't ringing any bells yeah I, aren't they like uh Bioshock and stuff too. Sure, but but none of those studios have done anything in fucking years. Like the last Bioshock Infinite, when like that's the last game out of that studio, and then they shut the studio down. Like th- that's what I'm saying. Like it's weird that Take Two has the 2K, 2K stuff. Games, so 2K, 2K Sports, 2K, yeah, and 2K Sports. Um, but besides Rockstar, what else do they really have? Bioshock, Borderlands, Civilization. Right, but Borderlands isn't owned by them. Like, they're just the publisher on it, and that's owned by Gearbox. Hmm. So, like, even if you bought Take-Two, you might be, like, I don't know, I'm assuming that Gearbox owns Borderlands, because they're building a new one. It's being published by Take-Two, but as far as I'm aware... They own Grand Theft Auto and... um, Red Dead are the the big things. Yeah, this is it's a stupid rumor. It was started it's, by it's, market. That's the it thing for me. Like analysts, I'm, market analysts. So, and I mean, who knows? Maybe because they don't really have anything else right now. Maybe Sony's like shit. We could buy them now, <laughs> and get a you deal know, for the PS Five. F- for the PS Five, we could have Red Dead Redemption Three and Grand Theft Auto Six on our platform uh, exclusively. That, yeah, I mean, that that would that would. Assuming that Sony is willing to pay seven hundred million dollars over the next 
eight years to allow <laughs> Rockstar to build Some those of games. Some like ten billion dollars. That would put a huge dent in Xbox's library. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's interesting. I mean, it's definitely a curious. I mean, you got Microsoft out there buying up studios. I mean, Sony, I mean, at some point, it's got to kind of look around and go, shit, like, we better be careful. I, I mean, I'm maybe maybe they're like, fuck, instead of buying four or five kind of whatever studios, maybe we, we just buy this one and lock it down, and those, that stuff's ours mm-hmm. from now. Like, or, or like you said, this is all just bullshit, and, and who knows? Yeah, I don't um, think it's real. Uh, Microsoft News. Uh, Microsoft's wireless display app, uh, which is available on the Xbox One now, it was in testing uh, for like the you know, the people who test the early Xbox uh, dashboards or OS. Yep. I don't know what the hell you want to call it. Um, so this is what you'd want to download to your PC. Um, so this allows you stream to stream PC games to your Xbox One. Yep, through, and it's kind of so funny. It's, it's from Steam. Even it says. Yeah, it's essentially anything running on your PC. You can you can use it to run games. You can use it to run um, essentially pr- almost any full screen app. Um, it won't d- do things like protected content, so you couldn't use it to stream something like Netflix. Which would make no sense because you could just do that locally on the Xbox already. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm yeah. just saying, like it's one of those things. Um, But yeah, but it it will allow you to... Because it uses their wireless display app, which essentially just is going to use your Xbox One like a second Mm -hmm. screen, more or less. And so it's going to stream it that way. Yeah, it's kind of funny because you could have done this the other way, Xbox to PC. And everyone's like, no, I want to do my PC to my Xbox. (laughs) That makes sense, man. You're sitting in front of your TV. Like, think about it. It makes more sense going from PC to Xbox as opposed to the other way. I could totally sit in front of my TV now and play Devil May Cry 5 and just stream it to my Xbox and and play it on my big screen. Yeah, big screen. I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'll definitely be downloading the app and giving it yeah, a shot just, and seeing, like, the latency and, and so on and so I'm forth. Sure in home, it's pretty But that's decent. pretty cool because, like, now all of a sudden, you know, now your Steam link is kind of... It's kind I can of stream my PC ultimately. games down in the basement here now. There I don't you go. need to buy another Xbox or another gaming PC. Heck yeah. That's pretty cool. It's pretty sweet. And you're using your Xbox One controller? Like, whoop, whoop. you're good to rock and roll. Uh, we have no public service announcements, so let's uh, get into our free-for-all section. Um, free-for-all! Free-for-all! This is where we talk about movies, TV, and or whatever the hell we like. I wrapped up <laughs> the Umbrella Academy on... Netflix. Netflix? It's, Is that everything you hoped it would be? And then it's some? good. It's not amazing. I was what? I was engaged and wanted to keep watching. I don't know how I feel about the ending. I I think it it definitely wraps up for a second season, so but I don't know if they've even said there is gonna be a second season yet. Um Interesting. I mean I know it's based off a comic book, so let me See if I can find any news on whether there's going to be a second season. I don't see any news I've, about a second. I've been really uh, curious to watch that. Yeah, it's on it my list. Umbrella, there's a story here. Umbrella, Umbrella Academy season two. What to expect? Um, there you go. It's it was just kind of sl- a little slow in points. A lot of development. I did like some of the characters. Yeah, there must definitely be a season okay. two. There's a couple articles here referencing it, so it it's not gonna blow your socks off. It's good. It's a slow burn. Um, okay, I did enjoy some of it. I, hey, man, if I'm in the right mood, a slow yeah, burn. The, the, can then be there right is some there's jam. some neat concepts and stuff going on in it, like yeah, time travel and you know stuff like I've that. I've got I think two episodes of Titans left and then the plan is to probably watch them. I, I think it's just, I think it's quite like I've heard a lot of people say I enjoyed it. It's not like amazing but it's good. You know whereas like say, Titans people have said Titans is awesome. I'm I'm loving Titans. Yeah. It's a little dark for my wife but it's pretty rad. Um what are you going to say? I will say I know this isn't going to be for everybody, 
but I'm going to throw it out there anyways. And I know we talk about video games and nerdy shit on the show. Um, but Netflix just recently released a Formula One. Oh, I saw that on being advertised show. on my dashboard. Yeah, it's like, um, I can't remember the exact tagline, but it's like F1 something or other. That shit is, is it great. Is drama or is it a documentary? It is essentially, they took a bunch of cameras and they followed the entire 2018 Formula One oh, season. So it's a real, it's not like a main And you get thing. to see fucking all the drama between the drivers and the teams and all the shit going on behind the scenes. It is rad. Like I, the other night we, um, I was looking for something cause like they're, they're about a half an hour between, they're like between a half an hour and kind of 40 minute long episodes. So they're not super mm-hmm. long. Um, I was looking for something that wasn't super long, et cetera, et cetera. And I was kind of like, oh, this looks kind of cool. But you know, my wife was watching with me and she was like, well, why don't we like, why don't we try an, ep- an episode and see if it's, you know, if it's any good, like if it's whatever and you should watch it by yourself, then, you know, whatever. And I was like, okay, that's fair. Um, we burned through the first episode and she like looks at me and she's like, this is fucking cool. We <laughs> should watch, watch another more. episode. And I was like, all right, like that's all I, you don't have to tell me twice. Like I, I love it just cause it's awesome. And like, but but yeah, they they film it in such a way that it That's is cool. it is like a documentary, but it's super cool just because you're you feel like you're there and it's like it's um So it's like reality really TV job. but not like trashy reality TV. Totally. And and like they do a really cool thing like in the in the second episode they're showing um like two racing drivers that are both from Spain and how one of them when he was 10 years old actually met the other one when when he was at, at a racing. formula one race when he was a kid and he was like oh my gosh like you are like you this is insane like you're my hero and then here he is 10 years later literally racing against him in formula one and and it's just it was it's a really cool episode just showing like the dynamics between them and and the races and obviously like you know the younger and a guy is trying to like surpass the older guy but like it's 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 really done well. Like that show is really really done. Formula well. One Drive um, to Survive ten episodes. That's the one. So we're like four episodes in now, and like it's it's really enjoyable. It's a really. I tell my, it's I an tell easy my watch, brother, but it's it, it's fun. Like it's right up his alley, and my brother in law as well. Yeah, yeah, it's super cool. Like I said, it's it's just it's like it you're must seeing be really unfettered awesome, access like visually too, just because. All the, oh, all the dude if if you've got the speakers for it j- like hearing the cars the and hearing and it too is just oh some nice drone yeah. aerial footage <laughs> so good <laughs> and man like for the first time they're doing like full helmet cams and stuff oh, and when you're cool. in the that's car like with them VR. oh dude you realize how fast oh yeah Formula it's a jet really it's a jet is. plane on the ground those things are fucking it's crazy it's crazy um so yeah if you're even remotely interested in that it's check a, it it's out a it different is level. cool as shit it's that's really, cool really that's cool. awesome because i've see it keeps popping up because it's obviously it's yeah. new and they're hyping it a bit so check out the first episode like they like i said they did a really cool job of the way they film it and the way they talk to people it's not kind of your classic like this is just a slow documentary yeah it says ball. high like, octane docu-series oh yeah the production <laughs> the production value is insane like and it's just it's cool because you're seeing so much behind the scenes like it's never it's one of the few things that we've ever seen anything like this before in formula one where they've they've got the cameras behind the scenes and and they're talking to and it's you know you're you're hearing like racing drivers like swearing at people and you're hearing like you know in like in the first episode you see one of the um one of the pit crew he like screws up and he doesn't put the wheel on properly and like it causes a car to crash the wheel to just come off and like so you're seeing all the drama that's going around behind all the scenes with all of that like it's yeah. cool it's really cool Sweet. Um, i'll have to so check yeah, it out i was looking for something now that i wrapped up umbrella academy i, I didn't know what i was going to watch but yeah so, uh so. we both watched captain marvel yeah we did um the latest and greatest in the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe. Uh, tying up yeah. some loose ends, filling in some backstory, and introducing us to some new races and characters. Um, oh, yeah. 
Captain Marvel, the oh, first yeah. female like lead proper standalone. movie standalone. Totally. Brie Larson as what's her name? Killed it. Carol Carol Danvers. Danvers. It. Verse. Yep. Uh, I've never have you re- read the, any of the Captain Marvel comics? I've never read any of them. I haven't read any of the specific Captain Marvel like standalone comics, but like I've I've seen the character in like crossover events, um, you know, and and other comics that she's been mm-hmm. adjacent to and and obviously stuff that she's come into and I whatnot. Don't... So I mean, I'm not like I'm not super mm-hmm. familiar with her, but I mean, I know kind of who so, she is and what her powers are and stuff. So. Before we get into spoilers, because there's going to be a little bit of spoilers, not major spoilers, um, just maybe lower spoilers that you may or may not be aware of. So uh, I'll give you a warning when we get to that. We're not, if you want to know nothing about it, okay. stop listening now. We We're not getting all. there yet. Okay. I'm going to just talk about, I liked the movie. I thought it was great. I thought it was okay. fun. Um I can see why people are kind of excited for her to show up finally and how much of a badass she is. Um, it's man, I will say that it is a far cry from the early days of Marvel movies when the big superpower battles were like two minutes and then you get to this <laughs> and it's like godlike powers for 20 minutes, destroying everything like holy shit. Like, in, like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Like, they yeah. really, like, they're like, yeah, she can F shit up. And here's a big, very long, giant action sequence of why she's so important. And, you know, compared to, like, Iron Man 1, where the final, like, boss battle, in quotations, the end battle is, like, five minutes or two minutes of CG. Because, mm-hmm. you know, a different era. That was, de- that was like, a decade ago now, right? So we've come so far to where it's, like, now they just go crazy with, with superpower action battle scenes. Um also, she is one of the most powerful people in in yeah. the comics as well, right? So, like she's um, incredibly. Powerful. I like the '90s nostalgia. I definitely. I, awesome. I loved. I loved, I loved that. Brie. That was the best. And uh, Samuel Jackson. Every time they were on screen, it was amazing. Like they were fantastic. I think he was in that movie a lot more than I. Oh, thought he's he like amazing. It's it's this like was, probably the biggest amount of of sam jackson uh nick fury that we get in any of them minus i guess uh winter soldier but even yeah, more I mean, so this... like he's like this he's like the lead male actor in this movie well i was gonna say this is almost a nick fury origin story how nick too. fury became nick fury kind yeah. of movie in a weird way too like like yes we're getting who captain marvel is but we're kind of also seeing like this is how nick fury became be, kind of becomes Nick Fury, you know, as far as mm-hmm. Shield and stuff is concerned, right? This like, is a little different. Um, it was an origin story, like had some of the yeah. origin story tropey stuff, but it was a little different. Um, I I really enjoyed the movie. The only things I really had to complain about, it, I don't think in some of the like fist, the fist fighting scenes, I don't really feel like she carried them very well. Um, and I feel like they tried hiding that with a lot of like the cuts and like fast action stuff. Like they never really focused on her too much. Um, yeah, really? I, I did think they. So like I thought her choreography and the like, especially near the beginning when she's when her and uh, Jude Law are sparring. Mm-hmm. I I thought they did a great job with a lot of that stuff. I thought that would, like they did a a really good job there. Um. I mean, towards the end, like I think that was all, it was all was CG little, at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. I don't so, know. Like, but yeah, uh, that was the only. I, I personally I had. didn't notice that really. Um, it was a, it was a great movie. It's interesting. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, I recommend everyone see it. It definitely shot right to the top of my like favorite uh, Marvel yeah. movies. It's not personally. my favorite. I'd say it's top ten. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't say it was my f- favorite, but it's definitely near yeah. the top for yeah. me. I, I just think that uh, this fills in so much cool shit. Well, that's what I want to get to, uh, and this know, is some of the spoiler stuff right here. So if you don't want to hear any spoiler stuff that potentially wasn't in a trailer, um, my understanding of, like, okay, we're in spoiler territory now. So, you okay. know, follow us on Twitter, yada, yada, see you next week. We're pretty much done anyway. So if you don't want to hear any of this stuff, you're you're safe to bow. We love you. Thank you for coming. Um, there yeah. was your warning. 
Uh, like the Cree scroll stuff. Like I really, I had all my facts of that stuff mixed up, or I didn't know because <laughs> I didn't realize. Like so, I thought scrolls were bad, and I thought Cree so were that, good. That was the thing. Like honestly, in the comic books, this completely threw everything on its head. In the comic books, yes, like we're talking about. There's entire storylines, like the entire secret invasion comic book event was based upon the scrolls. Like bad scrolls. I guess it's like any other race like, is what they were kind of the, the gist of the story here is. Yeah, no, in, in, in like the comics, the scrolls are the bad yeah. guys. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Kree are not exactly Saints. without blame here, but they're for all intents and purposes, they're the good guys. Yeah, Kree's, and, the Kree's issue is their race feels superior because they have the, the, the intelligence, right? The AI, they, they just feel like they're a superior race or organization of beings to everyone else. So that may or may not make them bad, depending on whether you're a bad guy, an enemy yeah. of theirs. Well, like it's interesting because, like, like I said, like they they did a very interesting thing in in this movie, where they essentially took the last thirty years of comic book lore and they just kind of flipped it upside down and dropped it on its head, because um, because yeah, like it, the scrolls have been bad guys taking over and and they their whole thing is they like slowly infiltrate and and you know they kill people and they they take over and and they do bad things and. Yeah, like it's it's been wild to watch, and you know, and then in this they just flip. Yeah, that they're kind of like, like they're, they're like the refugees and like they're the a, a totally. minority race. It's like hated on by the superior mm-hmm. Cree. Uh, totally, I, I kept kind of waiting while I was watching this. I kept waiting for like the other shoe to drop and them to go like, "Oh my gosh, don't trust the the scroll because they're bad." Like they're you know what I mean? Like, and then it never happened, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Like, um. So yeah, that was wild. Um, Is it maybe some kind of Rod- retconning because they would be a very difficult enemy to handle in the in the MCU? No, I because like everybody Cause they're shape shifter, we right? Because then I guess the- yeah, but like everybody kind of thought that they were gonna um like a large like a big thing was that. A lot of people, you know, on the internet and comic oh, they've been alluding so to certain so people forth. being scrolls already in the MCU. T- totally, and so, and that's the thing, right? Like, so, like we, this whole thing kind of like throws all of that out the window. Um, and, and not to say that some of this can't. St- I mean, like, who knows? Maybe, maybe the scrolls, like, maybe this group of scrolls is good. Maybe there's still a bad group. Like, I yeah, don't know, but like, it's like, definitely you know, good and bad humans, right? Like a lot of people thought after this whole infinity war stuff that we were going to get more or less like in the, the comic books, invasion. like secret invasion, <laughs> like that's and that what may people still thought come, was right? kind of going to happen after. Right. That very, um, very well so, may still come. This could just be a good faction of crawl, right? Scrolls. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought I loved how this movie tied into practically all of the other MCU movies. Like that was oh, the it, thing that kind of blew yeah, my more mind. so like, than a lot of them. It really had like, a lot of crossover from totally, Shield. Like you had Ronan, yeah, the Ronan's accuser, in you there. Had Shield. You had the Tesseract for from like the, the Thor movies, Kree, and, like, which and, were in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep, totally. Like it just all of that stuff. I was just like, wow, like the. I feel like I need to watch oh, that I movie again have just to, watch to movie see it, all I, of the I things. I definitely missed some stuff. And then, yeah, like um, not being familiar with like the races very well. And like, mm-hmm. why does this feel weird to me? It was just weird because I'm like, aren't they supposed to be the bad guys? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> Is she getting tricked? Yeah. Like, totally. Uh, but I, I really um, enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed watching her wreck shop with her powers. I won't lie. The, like the last ten minutes of that movie, I was just like sitting there, like yeah. yes. Um, <laughs> Goose is pretty amazing. I didn't oh, yeah. know what to expect from oh, that, yeah. but I know the internet blew. I know the internet right? the blew whole time up like a week like, ago, talking really? about how awesome Goose was, and I'm like, I know there's something about this fucking cat. I don't know what it is, but we're gonna I, find out. I know, right? And for a while, I honestly thought it was just it was a really cute cat, and I was just like, this would be hilarious. Like the awesome um, music. Um, the nineties oh, nostalgia, like, such a good, such a good soundtrack. The, I mean, yeah, like that's all, 
like you said, the the '90s nostalgia, right? Like the the blockbuster and the the, the tape recorder, like just all that stuff. The Nine Inch Nails T-shirt and the, like some you know, some just, people oh. like uh, criticize her performance, but I think she was supposed to be like that smirky kind of like one-liner like quick like witty witty I, girl you know what i mean i loved that i really liked um, it too i i really liked it but some I, people like, i think interpreted I could it see as how like, some people could kind of it could come across for some acting. people as being um no she could she could in like i think she could kind of come across almost a little bit snooty mm-hmm. I never got this that makes sense i got like, like the, i i didn't reason i got the I really cute either. flirtiness from her like girl next yes. door like i you're like the girl in my class uh, i like i love you <laughs> you know what i mean but you're not yeah. the hot bitch but you're like you're right. still interesting and i don't know i i really liked her character i and she wasn't yeah, sexualized I, I and i thought she was super hot in this movie for some reason i, I don't disagree with you on <laughs> any of those statements <laughs> um i thought she also just nailed it like she she like I, I saw some stuff before about her like workout regimen th- and and th- and how hard she worked and stuff like that. If you and she had just, like holy yeah. cow! I think if you had more attachment to the character and you had your preconceived you know imagery in your mm-hmm. mind from reading the books and stuff, so maybe that's where some people's yeah. complaints come from. But having none, I think that works out better off for her. I mean, she is Man. she is now. I mean, they've even I believe um, Marvel is pretty much come out and said like she is currently the most powerful like person in the outside of obviously like thanos um she's like the most powerful person like superhero yeah. in the mc and her powers come from least. one of the infinity stones so like that's basically the gist yeah. of it she's a total badass like there's other um like even in the comics, like she is right near the top of being one of the most powerful outside well, of like human, right? Once he's yeah, yeah. she's not Cree. Like they just yeah. kidnapped her and brainwashed her. I th- I can't remember. It, it, it's a little different, but like her origins and obviously the the M- like the MCU stuff versus the comic books are mm-hmm. different. I think in the comic books she might be like half Cree or something like that. That's why she didn't um, die when she got blasted by the. The energy from the stone. Uh, yeah, I can't remember uh, something like she's that. She's special. Whereas, like, like uh, in this, whereas in this, she's yeah, a little bit like Star yeah. Lord, right? Like he was able to handle the Infinity Stone and it be fine because he wasn't. He was like, special, pure human or whatever, <laughs> right? Um, no, I, I honestly, it I loved it. I, I thought I want to watch great. it again. Yeah, I highly, highly yeah, recommend. We saw it. See uh, it. Yes, absolutely. The best female superhero it's... movie. Really? Oh, yeah. oh. I did like, I like Wonder Woman a lot, though. Wonder Woman was okay, but Wonder Woman is so overhyped. Oh. I'm sorry. I don't know. I mean, we just watched Wonder Depending Woman. Depending on your perspective, some I... people might think this movie's overhyped. Again, I don't think it's amazing. Like, I still think, I think Affinity War is still my favorite movie so far, still. Like, Interesting. I love Infinity War. Like, I've seen it three times now, and I. I the intro I, so, I still the intro crawl of this movie I still think that Civil War might Civil be War is really good. my favorite still the intro crawl of this movie man I like was literally like about oh to geez tear up. I teared up yeah, I'm not gonna I was, lie like, I, up I, tear, the I totally movie started. teared up it was like yep when you go see it you'll understand what we're talking about yeah I'm and then the post credit scene anybody. holy shit yes so good yeah. <laughs> I got goosebumps. And then the post I, post credit oh. scene. My wife yeah, was so was pissed funny. off. We waited for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the classic short uh, comical ones. So you're not yeah. going to die if you miss it. But it is pretty funny. The only thing, okay, so gonna go a little bit into the weeds here, and maybe you can help I me. But it. like, I was trying to think about this. Now, wasn't the tesseract in the ocean? with captain america during this that that was in like the 50s or 60s or 40s whenever world war one or two was that's when it was in the ocean because remember he got frozen and kind of did like some time traveling to modern time that's what i'm saying but they were so like because they 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 re yeah but okay so so captain marvel happened 
in the mm-hmm. 90s, right? So Captain America was frozen during the 90s because they woke him up at the beginning of, like, whatever that, like, whatever, like, the Captain, like, the end of Captain America was in the 2000s, like, essentially after the events of Iron Man and after the events of Incredible Hulk. So that was essentially now if we'll just, we'll say now in, in air quotes or whatever, but about 10 years ago, roughly is when they woke cap up. And I thought when they woke cap up, isn't that when they got their hands on the Tesseract again? Or am I missing? Something? I don't know the like, timeline and the, I'm sure there's an answer to this out there, but I know uh, I hear what you're saying. Means, Cause like, in my mind, I put it somebody, together. Too. Like, it's like, no, well he didn't wake up till after this. Cause they didn't right. find him. So before like, when the they found him, Right, that's what I'm saying. So he was technically in the ocean. Now I know at the end of like Cap, the the first Captain America movie when they like when he went into you know when he went down with the ship, like the Tesseract was yeah. in the ship and it I'm ended not, up in the right. ocean under. So now, how like so? At what point did the Tesseract get found, but he didn't? Or or am I missing mi- something? I feel like the we're Tesseract missing something. They would make found. a big error like that. They would be in all over the internet. I wouldn't. Th- I wouldn't think they would. But like yeah. now, I'm curious because I don't. Uh, you'd have to look up some Infinity Stone timeline or something or something. Anyway, the answer is um, there, my friend. Yeah, I was just. I was like, I was watching it, and I was like, wait, what happened to the? Wasn't it in the ocean with Captain America at this time? Like, when did it? Huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, see, so, yeah, there's, anyways, a, there's, a, was my there's only... a story from one minute ago. Oh, wow. MC, so MCU, I'm not the only person this is on GameSpot. MCU's Tesseract timeline. How the Space Stone went from Captain Marvel to Avengers Infinity War. So this okay. is like a bunch of stories within the last couple of days. So do a search. You'll get your answer. Dane. Awesome. Yo. That's in episode 196. In the gigabits and in your ear holes. Thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in and downloading this week's podcast. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Rick F. No K R I C F. You can always come bug me on Twitter at Dane Cody at D A Y N E C O D Y. I already did our housekeeping top show. Join the Discord. Like, follow, subscribe, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or Geekholics everywhere. Share us on or share us on the social medias if you like. Um, Tell, Tell your friends, friends rate, if review you like. us. That's all we ask on the iTunes and the po- Apple Podcast app. Uh, and of course, any stories we talked about, links are in the show notes. If you've got a capable, not sucky podcast app, um, <clears throat> Apple Podcast. Um, most other capable podcasts have <laughs> hyperlinks, and you can see the trailers and the stories we talked about if you want to check it out. And also links to our Discord and stuff like that are in there too. If you can't remember uh, our simple. Uh, Uh, bit.ly slash gap discord link until next week or two we're out i'm on holiday then dane's on holiday next week is going to be very difficult for us to record because of i'm gonna so we're trying to figure out what that's we're probably gonna miss a week Um, and then i'll have to find a special guest because i don't want to miss two weeks i don't want to miss two weeks either if worse comes to worse We'll, we'll find someone. Maybe I'll have to. Re- maybe I'll have to record an episode in Hawaii. Yeah, that's I don't know. that's too much to ask your holiday. Anyway, we'll take it off air and figure it out. Until next week, we are out. I gotta go watch Captain Marvel again. Peace. <laughs>